Hello, and welcome to LEGO Mindstorms EV3 Basics Action Block Basics. We'll be discussing the similarities and differences between the various action blocks that we have, and in the process, we'll do some programming as well. So please follow along. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the green action blocks. As you can see, there's quite a variety of them. As I continue to hover over them, you can get an idea of what their function is. But I'm going to focus primarily on the move steering block right now, as it is the one that we will be using extensively throughout our exercises. Did you notice by chance that just before the block connected, there was a gray area that appeared? Now, if I do that again, I let go. See how it snapped into place as if it were magnets attracting? Show that again. And then if I take it away and there is no gray area and I release, notice how it turns pale in color. Um, but when it snaps into place, the colors are very vibrant. That shows that the block is indeed connected and is ready to be used. One of the most common components of all the blocks is the mode. For our move steering block here, it is by default on for rotations, but you can change that by clicking on it and selecting a different choice, for instance, on for degrees. And that's not to mean degrees to the left or degrees to the right, but rather degrees of wheel rotation. Everything about the robot has to do, as far as the steering blocks goes, has to do with rotations of the wheel and however you measure it. In other words, right above it you have on for seconds. So it's your wheels are going to spin for rotations for X amount of seconds. Then you have simply on or off. And this is a tricky one, the on one, and we'll get into that in more in our exercises. So the fields just to the right of the mode are known as input values. And this one I'd like to draw your attention to right here. It says rotations. Notice that the mode icon and this field icon match for rotations. And then the field entry, the input value is one. Basically that's saying that the wheels will spin one full rotation. Now watch when I change it to on for degrees. Notice how it went to 360, meaning one full rotation, and the icon change to match the icon over here, which now says on for degrees. And then you have the full circle. It almost matches anyway. So watch what happens when I change this input value from 360 to 180. Notice how the icon above it changed to basically reflect that half wheel rotation. So let's go ahead and change that back to on for rotations, the default. Let's talk a little bit about this one. This is the steering field. And you can tell this by hovering over the icon as you can with all the other fields. And right now with it set to zero, it's basically stating that you are neither turning left or right because you have no positive or negative value inputted. But if we can do so, we can either slide it this way or slide it that way, basically saying negative 100, you're gonna rotate to the left. And this way, positive 100, you'll go to the right. As you can see, you have a maximum of a 100 point value to enter into that field. You'll notice too that since I could highlight that field, I can make an entry using the keyboard. And with this, I entered in a positive 50. And if I entered in a negative 50, watch the icon, see how it changed to appear as if you're making a sharp left turn. Now, you might suspect that just by that icon, that's telling you you're going to make a 90 degree turn. Well, you may or may not. It's all dependent on this wheel rotation. In other words, let's say you were to make an entry of 10. This meaning that your wheels are gonna go 10 rotations. Chances are you're gonna make way more than just a 90 degree turn. The point being is that in order to get what you want, a 90 degree turn, for instance, you need to balance 
your steering with your rotations. The next field I'd like to talk about is the power field. Think of it as your speed. Notice that the icon looks very similar to a speedometer. And like the steering field, you have a plus or minus of a 100 value. And as you might guess, if you set your speed to zero, you're not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and change this value to a negative number, negative 50. Notice that the steering icon changed to show as if you were going in reverse. And that is because that's exactly what's happening when you put a negative number in the power. Notice that the power setting actually goes to the left and that also shows that you're going in reverse. So let's go ahead and change this value back to positive 50. And as you see, the steering icon changed back to showing positive progress, forward progress. But what I want to show you now is if we change this number to a negative number, say negative 10, what's actually happening is that your wheel rotations are now moving in reverse, negative number. The positive number with the wheel rotations is forward, negative numbers are reverse. But you notice that the steering icon did not change. So that can get a bit confusing. You can actually think your robot's going to go forward, but it's going to go backward because you have a negative number in the rotations area, in the rotations field. So let's say we actually had a negative number here as well. We'll go back to the negative 50. And as you might have suspected, the icon over here changed and showing reverse. But what you actually have here is a lie because this is actually a positive because of the double negative. You are not going in reverse, you are actually going forward. So in that respect, watch out for this little trickery. What I suggest always is that you leave this field, your rotations field, as a positive number so that this icon is always being truthful to you. So this brings us to the last input field, which is the brake field. Unlike these over here, you don't actually get to enter anything. It is a selection field. And basically you have a check mark meaning true or yes, or an X meaning false or no. True being yes, brake. False meaning no, let's coast instead. That's about it. So now let's talk about the all important port selector field. To best illustrate this, I'm going to grab it and drag it down by our hardware page. So if you recall back in an earlier video, I mentioned how important it was that the port selections on your blocks match exactly to the physical connections on the brick. So here we see our port selections as B and C for the steering block. They represent large motors that are physically connected on the brick. And you see that here that it has B, port B, and port C. So that is a good match. So let's see what happens if we change one of these ports. Notice the yellow exclamation point. That's telling us that there is a mismatch between the port selection on the block and one of these ports, specifically port C. Let's change that back. One last thing to note regarding our warning that we got. Let me replicate it. You only get this if the robot itself is plugged in first and is recognized and you have this information populated, and then you create your program. So if you were to create the program first, before plugging in the robot, and you had a mismatch on your port selection, you would not get the yellow warning. It would not show up. You would be left to your own device to figure out why isn't your robot working properly. So be aware of that, that you won't always get this warning. If you have it in good practice to plug your robot in first before you create, that helps a lot. So I'll change that back and we're good to go. So now we're going to talk about the similarities between the two steering blocks. Here we have a move steering block and here we have a move tank block. 
Now what I want you to notice is that the tank block has two power fields, whereas the move steering block only has one power field and a steering field. So technically speaking, each of these steering blocks works identical. The reason being is if you look at our robot, it basically moves like a tank. Each wheel is powered individually, and it's that ratio of power between the two that determines whether or not it turns left, turns right, or goes straight. So if we look at the tank block, or I should say the move tank block, it's a little bit easier to understand what I mean. So here we see this is the left wheel's power, and this is the power for the right wheel. And if I were to change this down, let's say by half, what will happen is that you're, with your left wheel moving more powerful than the right wheel, going faster, however you want to look at it, you will get an arch turn. Now, if I were to change this down to zero, you would get a sharp turn, simply because your left side has all the power, and your right side, or your right wheel, is not moving at all. And this would happen for one rotation. So what do you suppose would happen if I change this to a negative 50? What you're getting here is a spin. The reason being is you have both wheels are getting full power, but one is fully positive and one is fully negative. Another way of looking at it is that your left wheel is going full forward and your right wheel is going full reverse, and that's how you get your spin. So to put the concept of tank steering into the steering block, think of it this way. Under the steering field, your right and left wheel are basically divvying up the power setting. This right here, the power setting. When it's set to zero, each side gets an equal amount of power. And in this case, with the setting being a positive 50, you're going to go straight. Now, the minute you change this, set it to 50, for instance, that is the same as if you set this over here to all the power on the left side to the left wheel with no power going to the right wheel. That's exactly what this is, 50. So what's happening is that if you put in a value of 1 through 49, basically your left wheel is slowly, incrementally getting more power than the right wheel. And the right wheel is slowly slowing down. And once we get to a value of 50, the left wheel is getting all the power and the right wheel is getting no power. So now if I were to do this, what do you think happens? If you're guessing you make a spin, you're absolutely correct. And this is why. Because remember we said, if we have a value of one through 49, one wheel is getting more power incrementally while the other wheel is getting less power incrementally until we got to a value of 50 in which one wheel got all the power and the other wheel got no power. Once you go beyond that, from 51 on up to 100, the other wheel that had no power is now steadily getting more power again, but in reverse. And so basically what we're saying is that now, at a value of 100, the left wheel, in this case right here specifically, the left wheel gets full power, while the right wheel gets full power negative in reverse and therefore you get your spin because both wheels are spinning equally as much but in opposite directions. So now I'd like to very briefly touch on a couple more of the action blocks. What we have here is a display block and a sound block. Notice that each have modes, input values, but notice that there is no port selections. We'll get into that in just a minute. Let's start here. As you may have guessed, by clicking on the mode, you get some selections. Image by default, get to do some shapes, 
text. If you clicked on text, notice that rather than import selection, you get something else up here. This is actually an area where you can make some changes other than port selection. Type here. And if you typed anything, whatever you type, it ends up showing on your display when it's queued up. But if you did an image, again, back up here, you can choose some things such as angry eyes. There again, that would show up when queued on your robot on the display area. The sound is very similar. You have selections when you click on the mode. By default, you have play file, but you can also do things like play a note. And if you were to change that in one of the input fields, get the little keyboard action going on. Play a tone, kind of the same thing, but you're actually dealing with hertz. Play file, you can make selections. You can choose animals. Now prepare yourself, this might get a little loud. Here, we'll try this. And there you have it. That's the basics of it. One last thing I'd like to say about these two blocks is that they don't always work as planned. In other words, you'll queue something up, a sound file for instance, and you go to play it, it sounds like it's playing because you hear it on your computer, but when you go to queue it up and actually run it on your robot, you get no sound. Same thing with the display. You might queue up an angry eyes, when you go to play it on your robot, it does not display on the display. So one workaround for this, is to actually select a different choice, run it on your robot, and then go back and select the original choice and run it on your robot. Another thing you can do is to highlight the particular block, go back down to your hardware page, and click Run Selected. Oftentimes, that forces the issue as well. But don't let the sometimes persnickety character of these two blocks discourage you. Work the workarounds, play with the settings, and have a lot of fun. It's worth it.